Your life journey is about learning to become more of who you are and fulfilling the highest, truest expression of yourself as a human being. That's why you're here. The three things that I want to leave with you, just these three, I could do 10, I could do a whole life class, but just these three things will carry you if you let them. First and foremost, knowing who you are. Knowing who you are. Being able to answer this question, who am I? And what do I want? Who am I really? My answer is I am God's child. I am that which is born of all that is. I am, as Pierre de Chardin said, a spiritual being having a human experience. Come trailing the breath of the ancestors yet, but trailing the breath of the angels and understanding that because I am connected to the source of all that is, all that is possible is possible for me. That's who I am. And what do I want? I don't want to just be successful in the world. I don't want to just make a mark or have a legacy. The answer to that question for me is, I want to fulfill the highest, truest expression of myself as a human being. I want to fulfill the promise that the Creator dreamed when He dreamed the cells that made up me. What do I want? You must have some kind of vision for your life. Even if you don't know the plan, you have to have a direction in which you choose to go. What I've learned is that's a great metaphor for life. You want to be in the driver's seat of your own life because if you're not, life will drive you. So, knowing who you really are, in this space and time that we embody. That's number one. What do you want? Who are you? Number two, you must find a way to serve. Martin Luther King said that not everybody can be famous, but everybody can be great because greatness is determined by service. Now we live in a world where everybody wants to be famous and where we admire people for just being famous. We think being known brings us value. The truth is all of that will fade in time. In three years, you won't be able to name the housewives of Atlanta. The real truth is that service and significance, service, and the significance that you bring to your service is that which is lasting. So to be able to, whatever your occupation or job or talent or gift is, our honorees today getting doctorate degrees, to apparently opposite fields, HIV and AIDS and the spoken word. But what they have in common is service using the spoken word in service to community and the world, using your knowledge and information about HIV and AIDS and medicine in service to the world. And if you look at all the most successful people in the world, whether they know it or not, they have that paradigm of service. Everybody's talking about Mark Zuckerberg and the IPO. Service. Jay-Z, rapid service through the word to people through song. For many years, I was really just happy to be on TV and people would stop and say, oh, you on TV? Yeah, I'm on TV. I like being on TV. It's a nice job. And it was about the time that I received my 
honorary do doctorate from Spelman around 1993. So I don't know if that had something to do with it. I thought of myself as Dr. Winfrey. That I went back and I took a long look at what it was I was doing on, on TV and made a decision that I was no longer going to just be on TV, but I was going to use TV as a platform, as a force for good, and not be used by TV. And I will tell you, my decision to make that significant change in the way I operated on television, using television as a service, changed my career exponentially. Service through medicine, ser service through art, using whatever it is you produce, your product, as a way of giving back to the world. When you shift the paradigm of whatever it is you choose to do to service and you bring significance to that, success will, I promise you, follow you. Service and significance equals success. That's number two. Number three, it's so simple, but so hard to do. Always do the right thing. Be excellent. People notice. Think of how you notice. You go to Taco Bell, somebody gives you an extra napkin and some sauce. You notice. You want to go back to that person. Because even at Taco Bell, excellence shows itself. Be excellent. Let excellence be your brand. Everybody talks about building a brand. I never even knew what that was. When people say, you're a brand, I would say, no, I'm just Oprah. What I recognize now is that my choice to in every way, in every example, in every experience, to do the right thing and the excellent thing is what has created the brand. And what I know is that when you are excellent, you become unforgettable. People remember you, you stand out. Regardless of what it is, you become an unforgettable woman. And that is what we all want. We want to be unforgettable and not forgettable. So doing the right thing, even when nobody knows you're doing the right thing, will always bring the right thing to you. I promise you that. Why? Because the third law of motion is always at work. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. That is so true in all of our lives. You just have to do the right thing and the right thing will follow you even when people don't support it. I remember many times on my show, there are many shows y'all never saw. And the reason you didn't see them is because I got the last vote. And I remember 2010, my team, hardest working team in television, had done this interview with a woman who turns out she was a Sunday school teacher by day and a sex addict at night. And they were like, you won't believe it. We got her going out. We got her with the men and we get to show her and she was willing to show us everything. I sat down with a woman for an interview that was taped. And during the process of the interview, I said, why are you doing this? And she said, oh, I want to help people. I want to tell my story and I want to help people. I said, do you have children? She says, yes, I have a 10 year old son. I knew right then this is never going to see the light of day. So we got off the air and I said to the lady, we are not going to air that show. And she said, why? My producer said, why? She knew she was being filmed. She knew what she was saying. She knows what you, I said, because her son will never get over it. Her son will never get over it. And it's not worth a rating point to me. Not worth a rating point to me to know that there's a 10 year old boy who's destroyed because his mother went on the Oprah Winfrey show and told all her business. You do the right thing.
even when other people think it may not be. And oftentimes, when you make a decision to do the right thing, immediately you're faced with doubt. Was that the right thing? Was that the right decision? I don't know, was that the right thing? You always know it's the right thing, when in the end, there is peace. You are rewarded by peace in knowing that you did the right thing. The question is, what are you willing to stand for? That question is going to follow you throughout your life. And here's how you answer it. You put your honor where your mouth is. Put your honor where your mouth is. When you give your word, keep it. Show up, do the work, get your hands dirty. And then you'll begin to draw strength from the understanding, the true knowing that history is still being written. You're writing it every day. The wheel's still in spin, and what you do or what you don't do will be a part of it. You build a legacy, not from one thing, but from everything. You have no idea what your legacy will be, because your legacy is every life you touch. Pick a problem, any problem, and do something about it. Because to somebody who's hurting, something is everything. If you can just capture the humanity of the people, of the stories that you're telling, you then get that much closer to your own humanity. This moment in time, this is your time to rise. You know, there's seven billion people on the planet right now. And here you are. You can use your gifts to illuminate the darkness in our world. Eat a good breakfast. It, it really pays off. Pay your bills on time. Recycle, make your bed. Aim high. Say thank you to people and actually really mean it. Ask for help when you need it. And put your phone away at the dinner table. Be nice to little kids. Be nice to your elders. Be nice to animals. And know that it's better to be interested than interesting. If you're fighting with someone you really love, for God's sakes, find your way back to them. Because life is short even on our longest days. Your job is not always going to fulfill you. There will be some days that you just might be bored. Other days you may not feel like going to work at all. Go anyway. And remember that your job is not who you are. It's just what you're doing on the way to who you will become. Look for the lessons because the lessons are always there. And the number one lesson I can offer you where your work is concerned is this. Become so skilled, so vigilant, so flat out fantastic at what you do that your talent cannot be dismissed. Stop comparing yourself to other people. You're only on this planet to be you, not someone else's imitation of you. Your life journey is about learning to become more of who you are and fulfilling the highest, truest expression of yourself as a human being. That's why you're here.